Thank you very much for staying and welcome back. Now, the IMF mission team is in town to assess the health of the Ghanaian economy and possibly finalize program extension talks with government. George Jaffe has more. The assessment by the visiting IMF team is under the fund's Article 4 consultation, which is carried out in countries that have a program with the fund every year and sometimes on member countries. The last time the IMF carried out that surveillance on Ghana was in 2014. This review by the IMF has become necessary following the new programs and measures the current administration is planning to introduce under the three-year program. It is also crucial for countries like Ghana to help prevent any economic crisis. The mission will be in the country for about two weeks and it will be led by its new mission chief for Ghana, Annalisa Fedelino. The team would also be seeking to find out from government whether it really wants to extend the program to December 2018. However, Joy Business understands some senior persons within government are not for a program extension as they are pushing for it to be concluded as scheduled. But some persons with deeper understanding of Ghana's program say it might be difficult to implement all the targets under the program by April 2018. The team may also try to review Ghana's performance under the IMF program so far, which would influence for the disbursement of IMF cash to government. Meanwhile, government has been able to raise more than 3 billion CDs in the country's first 15-year bond. It is all, it's also managed to raise 1.4 billion CDs in another 7-year paper that was also closed last Friday. The, the state is expected to pay investors which uh, lent these funds to government an interest of 19.75%. But is cost of this bond expensive and what could be the impact on the economy? George Raffi again tells us more time the country is issuing a bond that will be paid over a 15-year period. Government actually had 3.427 billion CDs worth of bids from investors but actually took 3.422 billion CDs. Proceeds from the 7 and 15-year bonds totaling almost 5 billion CDs should hit government's account today. Some of these inflows which are also coming from foreign investors would go a long way to help stabilize the Ghana city. Finance Ministry is hoping to use funds raised to pay short dated bonds like the three and five year bonds that are maturing and focus on more long dated bonds. This is expected to give government a longer time in paying these debts and free the short term space for private businesses to borrow from banks, a development that could help reduce the cost of short term credits. Government has also instituted an arrangement that could see it step in and buy back the bonds, a development that could help in managing the cost of servicing the bond. According to the second quarter bond calendar, the state is planning to issue another 15-year bond in May. And that was a business desk report. Now, the World Bank is increasing amounts of funds available for projects the institution is supporting in Ghana. The 40% jump in funds allocation should result in the country getting more than $1.2 billion spread over a three-year period. Country Director of the World Bank, Henry Karari, who disclosed this to Joy Business at the program to review the bank's assistance for Ghana, said the move was influenced by progress made in stabilizing the economy. Yes, indeed, Ghana will be getting more from the World Bank Group. We have uh, the next International Development Association, or IDA, uh, 18, will have a 40% increase in the amount of uh, funds that are available for Ghana from the World Bank. This will effectively mean we're increasing from about uh, $780 million over three years to 1.2 and maybe even up to uh, more of uh, US dollars for the next three years. One would ask that, so what is the rationale behind this? Is it because we are utilizing our funds or you think that the economy is expanding therefore as a, a partner and not a donor you think that more funds need to be advanced towards this country the development challenges in ghana of course remain uh, we have seen improvements in a number of areas in particular we know that poverty has gone down but overall all countries all either countries uh, which are countries that have income of less than 1,250 uh, per capita. 
uh, qualify for either. They will be receiving additional funds. In some cases, much more than the 40% increase, but in the case of Ghana, it will be 40%. The reason that Ghana is getting more, first of all, is Ghana's portfolio has performed well. Uh, Ghana has had a very stable uh, political uh, system, and also uh, the performance of our portfolio as a whole has been improving, uh, and as such, Ghana deserves more support from the World Bank. Let's, let's come back to the, the performance of these disbursements. And I know that recently there were concerns about even utilization of these funds. As we speak right now, there's still a problem where a chunk of these funds that have been disbursed has still not been utilized by government or the various projects that were supposed to be advanced to. In general, Ghana has had a very high uh, disbursement of World Bank funds. We have a portfolio right now of uh, $1.7 billion. Uh, for Ghana, and much of that, 66% of that, has actually been dispersed. We only have about 475 million uh, remaining uh, to be dispersed. So Ghana has performed well. Nevertheless, there are still challenges, and in particular, the key challenges relate to compensation for property owners or land owners where uh, government or public projects have had to uh, take up uh, these privately owned properties or land. So that particular challenge, I think, is one area where we need to work on with the government and throughout, uh, particularly with the land valuation department and throughout the government to ensure that these compensations are paid on time. Do I get from you that with these funds that have been disbursed, uh, uh, it's not sitting in any account somewhere, it has been utilized for those projects that were supposed to be utilized? Today we are hosting the results and knowledge fair which demonstrates how the money has been used. We are quite satisfied with the way that the money is used. We have systems in place to ensure that uh, the procurement is done in accordance with uh, the national laws of Ghana or the guidelines of the World Bank. We have systems in place to ensure that the financing uh, is audited properly, so we have financial management that uh, reviews. So we have our own ways of tracking to ensure that these funds are properly used. All right, so Henry Karali is the country director of the World Bank resident in Ghana. Meanwhile, the over $1.2 billion is expected to be approved by the Bank's International Development Association later this month. Away from that story, the Royal Bank says it will increase lending to its customers following a reduction in the central bank's policy rate. Since 2015, some financial institutions have decreased their level of lending to the private sector coupled with the high interest rates which have translated into high cost of doing business. Speaking to Joy Business at the grand finale of the Royal Bank's Financial Literacy Challenge, uh, Managing Director Osei Asafweji revealed the cut in the policy rate to 23.5% opens way for the financial market to expand. Here's more in this report. The Royal Bank challenge is an inter-university competition designed to strengthen financial literacy in Ghana. Four universities, including the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, as well as the University of Ghana, made their way to the final stage of the competition. Speaking to Joy News, Managing Director of Royal Bank, Osei Asafuaje, stressed the bank is committed to ensure the competition makes Kenyan students relevant for the job market. We have felt all along that there's a huge gap between industry and academia when it comes to what is taught in the universities. So our way of trying to bridge the gap is to, is to support and finance this program. We feel that this program has facilitated a kind of uh, uh, knowledge, filling a, a knowledge gap as far as banking and uh, the universities are concerned. Uh, financial literacy is a problem uh, throughout the country, both in the, in the universities and, and uh, among the, the, the populace. So we felt that financing this will help close that gap of financial illiteracy as well as the gap between theory and practice. At the end of the competition, students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology turned out winners. A student representative, Fred Amano, urged industry players to help bridge the gap between business students and the job market. In Ghana, you realize that most people um, know a little of 
a lot of things. I want to say that if it comes to um, something in particular, almost everybody knows a little, just a little of it. So we realize that we take decisions that don't become impactful. We take decisions that don't really become relevant. So what I want to say is that um, financial literacy, it means that for every sector of the economy, there has to be proper education so that every person in this nation will get to know almost 100% of everything. So for instance, when it comes to, um, let's say, investment, most people have an idea that it's about putting your money, committing your funds into, let's say, a security or something or a firm in order to gain returns. But we realize that just few people in this country do investment because some, some don't really know how much they are going to benefit. So I want to say that with financial literacy, there has to be mass um, public education about it. The Real Banking and Finance Challenge is an EduFair Ghana Foundation initiative aimed at giving undergraduate students the opportunity to exhibit their intellectual capacities on matters related to banking and finance. And in another development, the managing director of the Royal Bank, Osei Asafweji, has revealed that the bank is committed to reducing the interest rates following the policy rate cut by the central bank. Rentals is beginning to firm up. Inflation is uh, being uh, stemmed, and that is why the policy rate will come down. So what, to me, the, 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 the importance of that policy rate variation is that Inflation is now uh, control, being controlled and that interest rates can then, be, can then begin to come down. Because when po the policy rate goes down, it, what it does is to give an indication that banks can, can now begin to lend more because the cost of funds also become cheaper. People are now prepared to lend more. And so I feel that uh, with the kind of aggressive development agenda that the government has, we need credit to go out there to support it. So with the policy rate going down, I think it is in the right direction. Banks will now begin to lend more. We would rather increase the amount that uh, we, we've been lending. Uh, last year, for instance, I think that we slowed down a little bit because the economy was showing signs of uh, some challenges. And uh, as a result, uh, we couldn't lend much. And there were so many reasons why. One of them, of course, was the fact that the policy rate was so high. If the policy rate is high, interest rates are high. And so default rate also becomes very, very high. Now that it is coming down, it's a, it's, it is an indication that now uh, cost of funds will go down, people will be more interested in borrowing, and therefore we are ready to, to, to take up the funds. Just on the marketplace, now moving on, the new governor of the central bank, Dr. Ernest Addison, begins work officially today. As he commences work, some captains of industry have been making demands which they think must be addressed urgently by the new governor. Key amongst them is the working towards stabilizing the Ghana city against the other major trading currencies. CEO of the Association of Ghana Industries is Seth Chuma Kwabwa. The immediate past governor, Dr. Abdul Nashiri Sahako, embarked on a number of initiatives to improve the country's monetary policy regime. These, in a way, led to a marginal appreciation of the city over the past few weeks. Some of these initiatives are expected to continue during the tenure of the new governor, Dr. Ernest Addison. According to the Association of Ghana Industries, the new governor must work urgently towards stabilizing the economy and make an effort to bring down policy rates further. Speaking in an interview with Joy Business, Chief Executive of the Association of Ghana Industry, Sechum Akwabwa, indicated that the major worry for industries in Ghana is the policy rate and its implications on commercial banks' lending rate. The governor has a major role to play in supporting government to have the fundamentals of the economy right so that we could all have the stability we expect. But in doing so, we think that the fundamentals of the economy is so highly dependent on the productive sector or the production sector. So you need to have industries coming up so that we don't import too much. If we don't import too much, we are likely to achieve the stability we want. So we want the new governor to be aware. And of course he's aware, but he work, he, he, we expect him to work with us so that the production sector will go up and that it will help uh, show up the city and stabilize the system so that it becomes a more predictable environment. The AGI further pledged its support to the new governor. So we'll continue to work with, with the governor and the Bank of Ghana, but the key function of the Bank of Ghana we all know. The aspect that relates to us, which we always talk about, is ensuring that there's macroeconomic stability. There's a macroeconomic stability. 
and macroeconomic stability means that you have to look at all the indicators that determine the stability of the economy. And the key part of it is the CD, the exchange rate regime. We must always have it within a certain range. He is confident that the new central bank governor will work with the AGI in coming out with some key policies to benefit the economy. Now, as part of efforts uh, to increase awareness of savings towards retirement, investment firm Eco Capital Investment has held a workshop to update Ghanaians on the best ways of preparing for early or late retirement. Here's more in this report. The low level of incomes in the country has persistently affected investment levels, as well as been a hindrance to adequate retirement packages. The Pensions Regulatory Authority show that one in every three Ghanaian actually saves ahead of their retirement. This, the CEO of Eco Capital, Dela Agbo, believes, can be addressed through the right channels of investment plans. He was speaking at a forum to educate Ghanaians on the need for preparing for early retirement. We want to tell people that it's not too early or too late to start talking about retirement. A lot of Ghanaians tend not to think too much about what? planning their retirements. They work so hard and they retire broke. So as a company we felt that we need to educate people about the importance of planning their retirements. They need to plan their retirements, they need to save and get ready for the old age. People think that oh the old age will never come. Now they are strong, they are well to do, so they don't think about old age. But trust me, before you realize old age is gonna catch up with you. And it's always good to invest a lot of money for the old age. Some participants of the program later spoke with Joy Business on what exactly a retirement means to them. So it gets to a time where you would not have as much energy to do the things that you used to do when you were young. So then if you do not prepare, you would um, retire and be broke. And you know, as we know, in this country, people don't consider this thing very seriously. So what happens? They retire and they, get, they go broke. After university, I realized I had to put something little down towards the retirement because uh, you, you watch that about 20 years ago, a CD can develop to lots of money. It can generate lots of money. So I realized that the little I put down as early as possible yeah, can give me greater gains yeah, in the future. Yeah. As a mother, I mean, how do you balance work, the pressures of home, the, pre the pressures of home, you know, having to take care of the kids and having to invest in your future for them? Right? You, you, you need to manage it because you, you cannot work and use all your money to take care of your children in the home without putting anything aside. You seriously have to put something aside because in case you have two children, you can take care of them. If you have three, you can take care of them. So if you have to, just tell yourself that the, the, the third person is my account or your third child is your account. So whatever you can use to take care of that third child, you can put it aside. You know, we all buy our cars, we have uh, homes, we take care of uh, other things, funerals and other things. Why is it that we have money for that and we cannot have money to put in investments? Once you can do the others, you can do investment as well. Interestingly, I met Eco Capital last year and um, I thought and found out that it, it's a very good institution. So anytime I get some money, I throw some into Eco Capital. And that's good, you know, because now I am able to get more money from eco capital and money from you know other sources as well now for every 100 phone calls bank customers make to get their issues addressed only 21 eventually get answered in other words the customer call response rate in the banking industry is just 21 percent this is according to latest research dubbed banking industry telephony efficiency byte index by market research firm wallsbridge The study was done over a seven-month period between June 2016 and January 2017 at the branch level. 23 banks currently operating in the country were used for the exercise. So why not all the existing 33 banks? Here's the chief executive of Wallsbridge, Kofi Asamoah, 
we made 650 phone calls okay. in total to the 211 branches. Mm -hmm. Between the time we started the survey and now, some of the banks had not been given licenses. Okay. And some of them too are fairly new, which means they don't have a lot of branch networks. And but one of the parameters we used was that any bank that didn't provide telephone numbers directly to their branches, we didn't include in the survey. We think that in order for this study to be representative, to produce robust data that people can actually use for decision making, we need to be able to look at those who are providing numbers directly to their branches. And they're in the majority. So, and then after that, we use what we call the stratified sampling. Mm -hmm. It simply means that so we sample 23 banks, right? But we know that the, brand, the banks have multiple branches. So how many branches can you talk to in order to make a case that, look, the problem is widespread? We decided to select between 8 to 10 branches per each sampled bank. Was it a random sampling? Um, you can call it random. But basically what we did was that when we, we go to the website, we select the first 10 branches and then we just go ahead well, with it because, because um, for every bank that is serious or any company that is serious about maintaining its brand image and consistency your job is to ensure that whether i talk to tamale branch or kumasi branch your 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 brand is represented the same way in other words it should be the same across both the 21 percent customer correspondence rates in the banking industry is way below the international standard of at least 80 percent amid some inevitable challenges. According to Mr. Samoa, this is worrying given the critical role of communication not only in today's banking industry, but the business world at large. In, uh, we've had a meeting with the CEO yeah. of the Ghana, yeah. Ghana Association of Bankers, and one of these is something that is non, it's non new. Okay. They are aware, and they are trying to put in place measures. He also pointed out the, the fact that there are other um, portals and other news that you can get information from. He mentioned websites, for example, um, online, which is true. But the focus of this study is not to look at how well the websites and the portals work. There's a very good reason why you give people telephone numbers, all right? Yeah. And we think that once you put it out there, it has to work. And for now, f to get an answer to a regular telephone line, whether it's a landline or a cell line, and remember that because some of the institutions know some of these problems, they've actually given cell lines to their branch manager. And some also use um, mobile numbers that have been registered as fixed lines as their branch numbers. Mm -hmm. So all put together, your chances of getting through to the nearest branch of your choice, according to the findings of this study, is 21%. For a report, as it will be launched next Tuesday, April 11th, in partnership with Joy Business, this will review the best bank in categories such as telephone etiquette, product knowledge, price and information consistency, and the ultimate bite winner, the most telephone efficient bank. Now, some stakeholders in the insurance industry have lauded government's National Electronic Identification Initiative as timely for the industry. The current government in its recent budget highlighted registration of all Ghanaians in an electronic database for effective identification purposes. Speaking to Joy Business at the launch of Bangat Home Assurance, Vice Chairperson of Bangat Assurance, Dr. Gideon Amenyado, said the policy will help eradicate falsification of information. Um, when there's a claim, there are processes that we go through. One of the things is to see whether you are the real person. So this identification will really, really aid us in our investigation process. Because insurance generally, what happens is that Let's take it for instance, the value of this big hostel is, let's say, $1 million. And we're going to ask them to pay a very small premium, like, let's say, $100. So, and a lot of people are paid that. We put that money together to ensure that those who really suffered the loss are paid. There are times people try to play smart. They haven't suffered the loss, and they will come. Identification is a key thing, and that's really going to help in the process. Now, a new West Africa Training Academy, WATA, is expected to create employment for mechanics and drivers based in Ghana. The academy is expected to help build the, or promote the advanced technolo technical manpower skills. Transport Minister Kweku Oporia Siyama disclosed this at the official launch of WATA and signing of agreements between three parties. Million Euro West Africa Training Academy is to deliver relevant training for the Ghanaian transport sector. 
following an agreement between Scania, GIZ, and Government Technical Training College, annexed to the GTTC in Accra and located on the premises of Scania West Africa headquarters in Tema, water will operate on a commercial basis. One of the key indicators of the agreement is to have at least 600 water-trained bus drivers with more than 10% being women employed by the Bus Rapid Transport Program. President and Chief Executive Officer of Scania, Henrik Henriksen, added the modern automotive industry demands highly skilled drivers as well as technicians. What we're trying to achieve here is address two of the main challenges we have when we enter any market in the world, and that is to find competence for technicians and competence for drivers. The technicians is mainly a challenge on our side at Scania because we need that to make sure that we keep our customer's vehicle on the road as much as possible. And then we need skilled technicians. And in many countries there's a good basic training, uh, but you need specific knowledge to work with these kind of vehicles today. They are much more sophisticated than they were like 10, 15 years ago. Today a normal truck holds around 16, 17 computers just to be able to run. It's a highly sophisticated production equipment that we're talking about, and we need highly specialized people to work with us. Meanwhile, German ambassador to Ghana, Christoph Resler, says the project is geared towards deepening the public-private partnerships. Aside the three main partners, European Trucks and Trailer Parts represents other companies that will be key stakeholders in ensuring the success of the academy. And that's it for this afternoon's edition of the Marketplace. Many thanks for joining me. Let's meet again tomorrow. My name is Emmanuel.